Make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, I come to lift my voice. Look to your other neighbor and say, I've come to lift my hands. Hallelujah. Why don't we lift our voice in our hands and lift our voice in inspiration now. Amen. Magnifying the Lord in song. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. If you're not ashamed to praise the Lord, I want to see you clap your hands. If you're not ashamed to praise the Lord, I want to see you stomp your feet.
Jesus. Well, I'm going to tell a little story. Went yesterday evening to pick up some chickens. Took two of my grandsons. I didn't know what kind of chickens I would be getting. But there's a few of them that are exotic. Or they're something. And I, I looked to brother, brother Long. I said, Brother Long. This is what your hairdo looked like B.C., before Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he was a head knocker, drug pusher, dope addict. I said, these, these are my uh, <laughs> B.C. chickens. I guess you would call them that. Anyways, I... I got to look at the big old moppy feathers on top of their head. I have no clue as to what kind of chickens they Someone told me what they were called. But I told them, said, yeah, no, that's my, my uh, what do they call them, uh, punk rockers. That's what they were called. <laughs> punk rockers. Head knockers. And I got to looking at my grandchildren. And they were up here just dancing. And I know some of you were thinking, ah, that. They don't need to be doing that. I'd rather them be doing that here Amen. than out there. Amen. Hallelujah. I want for my children and grandchildren and our church's children, amen, to learn what it's like to worship the Lord amen. here. While they're young, because I can assure you, and I can certainly attest to the fact, I've been around some areas where they do all that head knocking nonsense. If you haven't seen them, they, they are, they're more bizarre than what you and I can imagine being. Head banging. And, you know, the head flopping back and forth. And I have to go, oh. And they make fun of us. And they say we are in the wrong by carrying on the way we do at church. Honey, I want to shout unto the Lord. 
Amen. And I'm not ashamed to do it elsewhere neither. My dad's taught me different. I've seen him shout on the side of the highway. I've seen him shout in the store. Unashamed. And that's the way it ought to be. My, 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 I feel good here this evening. What a beautiful day this has been. Amen. For this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. And I'm going to be glad. You choose to be sad, disheartened, bent out of shape all you want to be. Amen. But I choose differently. My, my heart's set upon the idea of just being glad. And, and in knowing he is mine and I'm his. Amen. I'd like for us to remember to others in prayer, praying for them. Sister Melody, Brother Dusty, and family, Jonathan. Remember Sister Rachel, Brother Vesta, and, and the children. I'd like for us to be mindful of all of our guests that have come and gone and uh, are periodically making their visits, frequent visits here at the church. I'm praying that the Lord will just change their hearts, their lives. Amen. And I know that he will. I want it for us to continue to keep each other lifted up to the Lord in prayer, remembering all whose lives are threatened by this pandemic. Let's also be mindful of them who have just recently suffered loss. Remember uh, the Casey Stafford family. I want us to remember them in prayer. Remember to pray also for our nation. Let's pray for its leadership. Pray for spiritual leadership in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Donald. Okay. Sister Sharon needs our prayer. She's, that, that, that is correct. Sister Sarah needs our prayer. She has been ill in body as well. Anyone else? See, have a prayer. Yes, yes, the hurricane is headed toward Louisiana. Again, someone don't like Louisiana. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that, don't take me seriously on that, okay? Serious. Seriously, don't take me seriously on that. Okay. <laughs> Sister Connie. Yes, let's continue to pray for Sister Connie's niece who has cancer and dire need of our prayer. Sister Hadassah. Backsliders, amen. Brother Addison, Emma, yeah, Emma is sick, right? Ear infection. Brother Remington, family, amen. Brother Chantry, Tennessee, yes. Brother Seth Mott. Still pray for him, amen. Anyone else? Brother Nicholas, Dad, yes, remember Daniel. He's out, he's out in a boat out there somewhere, I think. Is he not? He's in Houston, okay. I, I know that he's out there sometimes battling these storms. Sister Wanda. Uh, unsaved family, backslid family. Sister Clara. Jeffrey and Crystal, amen. Well, I thought he had his hand lifted. All right, Sister Connie. Yes. Tiffany. Brother Brandon. Sister Cottrell. Brother Cottrell. Sister Cottrell has been sick. We just want to pray God's healing touch upon her life. Amen. Let's pray for all ethnicity. Let's pray for this this area pray for revival let's pray amen that god's way and will be done and accomplished here in tonight's service sister clarissa okay christopher also i think this may have been what carrington was wanting to pray for us his little sister all right all these needs and many more i threw that up did i sister anna Grandparents, grandpa to be healed of all time, or Spanish service in ministry, unity, the spirit of unity, amen. Hallelujah. Right now, loving God, we come to you again as we do oftentimes.
Lord, I know that some may consider us to be a people of prayer and pray many times in and throughout our church services. We know, Lord, that apart from you, we're nothing, and apart from you, our church services are nothing. And Lord, there is nothing too complicated for you, for you are our great physician. You are able to heal, make whole, and complete. Knowing, Lord, that we are complete in you, you being the head of all principality and power, again, we beseech you on the behalf of every need that is found to be prominently recognized here tonight, amen, by the presence of all that have come and as well would be signified in others' absence. Pray, Lord, for all that were unable to be here for various reasons, many due to illness. And I ask God that you will miraculously touch and heal them now. Amen. Lord, as we are created in your image, as we are a people, Lord, amen, that you are concerned with and about. Lord, and I'm so glad, Jesus, you are. I trust, Lord, that your glory prevail, amen, and that your spirit will indeed manifest itself, manifesting itself well within the hearts and the lives of humanity as a whole. Pray for leadership, amen, political, spiritual leadership. Pray, loving Savior, on the behalf of every soul, <laughs> amen, that has drifted and gone astray as you see the number of them that are backslid. God, and I trust that some way, somehow, in their backslidden state and in that frame of mind, they may find themselves, amen, becoming again alert and alarmed to the realization that time is short. Amen. The day is at hand. God, we pray for our schools. We pray for our school teachers. Pray, Lord, for the school staff. We pray, Lord, for McKinley. Pray, Lord Jesus, on the behalf of she, along with a host of others, amen, who have been sick, their God, lift them in spirit, amen, and in, in their bodies, make them whole. We give you praise for it. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we lean upon you to have your way, and that your will, I trust, will be indeed accomplished and achieved in this service tonight, Lord. Let every heart be pricked to that of the preached word, to that of the sung word. Lord, as we will administer praise to you, amen. God, I pray, Lord, that every life be changed before they leave this place, amen. And before the closing of this service tonight, all that may be watching online, Jesus, I'm trusting you, Lord, amen, to fill their hearts and lives full, <laughs> amen, and full with passion, full of desire. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. We give you praise for it. Blessed be to the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Lord, touch the Stafford family. God, let your glory prevail there. In Jesus' name. Pray for Sister Connie's niece, whose body is reeked, dear Lord, with cancer. Amen. You are able to lift that soul tonight. Amen. God, it is so easy for us, amen, just to casually make mention or reference to these whose lives, amen, are threatened by the ominous by the treacherous diseases of life, amen. I'm trusting you, Lord, amen, to hear our prayer as we pray. And I'm asking, Lord, that every prayer that be ushered forth unto you would be done, amen, with a great deal of passion. Lord, in fervency, knowing that the fervent, amen, prayer of the righteous man availeth much. I give you thanks for it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto the Lord. Praise be unto the Lord. Amen. Let's prepare to give an offering. Give, bring your offering. Amen. As we continue to lift our voice in song here tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen.
inevitable. That which he by no means can resist here tonight. Amen. As us are in his presence with our hallelujahs. Amen. Let's give to him. Come on, he's given to you and I more than enough. He's given to us, amen. Substantial strength, sustenance. King of glory. <laughs> Say that one high and lift it up. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be unto the Lord. Praise be unto the King. I have never had a vision compared to that of the prophet Isaiah, who at the death of one king seen the king of glory high and lifted up. And, and 
even witnessing the train of that great king filling the temple that I can only fathom what it might have been like. I have had those moments, however, to where I have found myself inundated by his presence, drunken by his spirit, only to know that God was truly present. Amen. That the presence of the Shekinah glory I found myself healed on numerous accounts. When mentally depressed or spiritually oppressed, healing was readily available. If someone has come tonight and, and you feel as though that you're on your last leg and the battle's not worth fighting anymore, I can attest to the fact that as long as you're fighting, you'll be the winner. Because I know the end and what the end will be like. I know what the outcome will be like. How do you know, preacher? Because this book promises. And more times than not, when I have learned to lean on the Lord, I have come to find out that the battle is not mine, but his. And when I leave it to him, he has always saw me through each and every battle. That's the business he's in, is to take one through, amen, through the fire, through your weakness. Yea, though I am weak, he's still strong, amen. And in my weakness, that is when he can prove his greatest strength. It's because in my weakness, if I would but just leave it all up to him, Brother Jack, God is going to see to it. He stands. Amen. Well, what a joy. What a pleasure it is to he have each and every one of here this evening. Brother, Sister Deuce here. I want to say what a joy it is to have you here. I told them this morning, I, uh, uh, <laughs> all we got to do is just, Go to Houston, load up a few trailers, and bring their items up here. We can make this place a permit of residence, permanent resident for them. Amen. And what a joy it would be to have them here. Brother Ducey, why don't you stand and just, just shout unto the Lord. Amen. Leave a word of testimony. I know. Yeah. You, you thought I was calling on her, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good. The Lord has been good to me. How many of you could honestly state the Lord's been good to you? The Lord's been good to me. Amen. I, what a pleasure it is to have this couple. I ought to know you. Your faces look familiar. And uh, you forget me if, if I fail to acknowledge you by way of via name. But uh, I want him to stand. He just looks like a preacher, so I want him to stand and just uh, leave, a, leave a word here tonight. Well, it's your honor. We're uh, passing through the streets of Buffalo and seeing a Pentecostal church inside. And we're celebrating the Lord. And we said, well, let's just go be in church because it's always a pleasure to be in the presence of God. Amen. No matter the trouble, no matter the sorrow, no matter the hurt, the pain, it's always a pleasure to be in the presence of God. It is. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you preach for Brother Travis this morning then. Okay. All right. Great people. And I might add, I did not share this testimony with anyone this morning, but they closed on that five acres in Centerville just this past week. Amen. The Lord blessed them with five acres of land. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It, you know, God just, he does things that way. That's the way he works. I have an announcement or two that is in need of being made on Alaska Singles, September the 19th at 5 p.m. Meet and greet. And then we have uh, Texas, something rather UPC. If you want to go, contact Sister Libby. So I'll just leave that up to you. Contact her if you want to know what the, was it S-A-M? 
Sam's? Okay, Texas, Sam, UPC. If you want to go, contact Sister Libby. Sister Libby, amen, I appreciate the fine work that she's doing with our singles. We've got more senior singles than we have young singles in this church, I believe. And uh, I don't say that in ill reverence to our elder single group. In fact, I say that in all honesty with a great deal of respect because it is a pleasure to have older singles in and among the church family as a whole. And everyone say amen. amen. I, uh, I'm not going to keep you long unless, you know, just the Lord says different. He won't. <laughs> well, Sister Libya has got the mind of God already. So. <laughs> TBC changes people, don't they? <laughs> yes. I might have to go over there and teach a few classes. <laughs> Take your attention to the word of the Lord reading from out of First Chronicles. If you will, turn with me there. First Chronicles chapter 4. And uh, we will read verses 9 and 10. First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Excuse me. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Because in my bearing it was with pain and with great grief and sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me. And that thou wouldest keep me and keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God, and God granted him that which he requested. And if God him, why not us? And if God him, why not us? For we are the people of promise. And we are a people which are called by his name. Reading now from out of the book of 2 Samuel, if you will turn with me there. 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23. And uh, we'll read verse 9. And then we'll go from verse 9 to... Uh, Verse 24, I believe it is. Chapter 23, verse 9. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ohi, one of the three mighty men with David. Everyone say mighty men. Mighty. When they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. Now taking your attention to verse 24. As a hell, the brother of Joab was one of the thirty, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Everyone say Dodo. Dodo. Look to your neighbor and say, you Dodo. You Dodo. I knew we can get some humor from out of that. Yeah. Do what, Brother David? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they are, dodo birds. <laughs> All right. Second Samuel chapter 23 now. Amen. Again, verses 8 through, I will make reference and only reference to the latter part, verse 39, Uriah the Hittite, 30 and 7 in all. 30 and 7 in all. Men who were all for one and one for all, labeled mighty men of God and great men that were found to be heroic and filled with valor. Amen. And one of them's name was Dodo. 
Gracious God, I come to you and I say thank you, Lord, for your many bountiful blessings this day. I'm asking, Lord, that you will baptize our ears to hear and our hearts to receive. Lord, and I pray that our lives be led and led well of your spirit and that we will be willing in every way to be led, knowing, Lord, as many as are led of your spirit, they are your children, they are your sons. God, and we know that if you be for us, there's none that can withstand us. For the word questions, who then shall be against us? So, Lord, I pray, amen, that you're stripped in all here tonight in the power of your might. Knowing, Lord, that it's neither by that of our own might, but it's by your spirit. It's not by that of our own power, but by the power of your spirit. That we lead and live lives that are overcoming and victorious. I ask in your precious name, Jesus, Lord, <laughs> strengthen our youth, strengthen our children, our elders, our mid-aged. God, from young to old, let ne'er a one be found without your blessings here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And everyone say amen. amen. God bless you as you're seated. There's nothing that could prove to be any more lethargic at times than when you are in deep study and you began to read from out of the pages of God's Word and you cross the writings of Chronicles. As is found in Chronicles, there are a litany of names, one following the other. Such names that are found to be under the heading of tribesmen, leaders, if you will, of each tribe. And when you read, all you read is these names which are found to be extremely difficult to pronounce, let alone uh, gain the least bit of interest. However, each name back in the day had meaning. And every name that was given and offered to humanity then, and particularly them who were found to be among the Jews, were names that implied or suggested. It suggested that that person would either be a person of ill will or a person of great will. However, in First Chronicles, as we see it here, it begins with an extensive genealogy, listing name after name with virtually no comment or literally little to no commentary whatsoever. And this grand family tree continues for nine chapters. Can you imagine studying it? And then you reading nine chapters of nothing but a litany of names that are hard to pronounce, one right after another. And then you have these bizarre names like that of D D Dodo. Now, I don't know altogether precisely as to what it meant then, but I know what it means today. When you look to one and you call them dodo, you are referring to a bird. And that bird is an exotic bird from Australia. And these dodo birds look like dodos. Now, most individuals in this litany of fathers and sons when we look into God's word and do an in-depth study and an assessment of what's taking place here, these fathers and sons appear only as a place marker to perpetuate lines of various families covering genealogy. One man, however, as was found in the fourth chapter of the book of 1 Chron Chronicles, seems to be quite different. And that was the man that we referred to here moments ago as being named Jabez. 
Jabez, meaning that his mother bore him in a time of sorrow, in a time of pain. He was associated with his mother rather than that of his father, which is unique of and within itself. Because in most instances, it was father, son, father, son. But in this instance, it's mother, son. So this lets me to know that you mothers play a significant role. And you are found to be absolutely needed. Whereas the kingdom of God is concerned. We read up and about numerous mothers in and throughout the pages of God's word who played an imperative role when it comes to that of the lineage of Christ. Some of which were women of ill repute, of bad reputation. But then God, but then God. But then God. That's the way it works with God. There are times for which we feel like we are useless. We are utterly futile, whereas the kingdom of God is concerned. But as useless and as futile as we may think ourselves to be, when we encounter a but God situation in our lives, we are no longer useless. We are no longer futile. Because God becomes everything. Everything to you and everything to others. Amen. Hallelujah. And so here within the fourth chapter of the book of First Chronicles, this man Jabez refused to be lost within a sea of names. I wonder if there's anyone here today and some of which I spoke to explicitly to this morning, young Christian, I spoke to you saying that there are times for which you feel small and significant, that you yourself are a person that will never amount to much in life. Here I want to bring to your attention a few people and make an address to you and letting you to know that you were not the only one that have ever felt that way. There are people even from out of the pages of God's word that have felt the same way. But God. I, I, I have to put emphasis on that. But God. God means everything. God changes people. Jabez refused to be lost within these, this sea of names. In fact, he rejected the sorrowful meaning for which was associated with that name. Christy, can you imagine having the name Dodo? But you've got a splendid name, a wonderful name. That name, Christian, which was first used in the New Testament Scripture only to be critical of them that were truly Christ followers. Amen. But it became a name and a title for which that many within the Christendom world now wears as a whole. Reason being is because they are Jesus fans. Hallelujah. I want to be more than just Christian in name. I want to be Christian in life. Hallelujah. Christian be more than just Christian in name. Be Christian in life. He is our life-giving source. He is the one who can make you into something that you would have never thought yourself ever to have become. Hallelujah. Not because you're anything spectacular. Not because that you're anyone, amen, found to be endowed with a great deal of splendor. It's all because of him. Hallelujah. And we are who we are because of him. 
That's why Paul said what he did in life and in reference to God's amazing grace. I am who I am and what I am by nothing more or less but by the grace of God. Hallelujah. But God. But God. Amen. So the name Jabez comes from a word meaning to cause pain. I'm not of the mind to believe, Riley Dean, that you cause pain. I'm not of the mind to believe, Christian, that you're a young man that causes pain. Nor am I of the mind to believe that any of you other children or young people here tonight, under the sound of this preacher's voice, amen, are born with the intent of causing deliberate or purpose pain, purposefully pain, amen, into the lives of others around you. Praise God. The mother of Jabez chose this name because of her difficulty in giving birth to her son. Jabez rejected her label. Hallelujah. Rejected her label. In his prayer that the Lord would bless him, in his prayer that the Lord would increase him, <laughs> he rejected that label. Increase his territory. Jabez transformed the meaning of his name by asking the Lord to keep him and to keep him, not oaks, from pain and harm. God can keep each and every one of us from pain and harm. Hallelujah. You don't understand, preacher. I have suffered. Oh, so have many suffered. There is a parade of miracles here tonight. There are a number of you that have come from out of the depths of despair. Amen. You were as despondent as one could possibly imagine ever being. You were drowning in sorrows. Or you were attempting to drown yourself in those sorrows. By becoming addicted to and addicted to a chemical source that would leave you, amen, rendered hopeless even after a high or a low in life. But when Jesus gets a hold of you, when you literally allow for Jesus be to become your guide and your source of hope and help and strength, amen, you have no sorrow. God has carried me beyond despair. He has carried me beyond that sorrowful state and position of which I have found myself endowed with in time past. How did he do it? He did it through that of his spirit. Amen. And to God be the glory. There are a great number of you that have found yourself. Brother Brandon, you're not here by accident. You did not just inadvertently step into this thing. I know that you were brought up in this way. I recently just had some one tell me this past week uh, that the re reason why Brother Mike Hyde, how many of you know Brother Mike Hyde? <laughs> how many of you know Brother Hyde? Fred Hyde. He's the one that orchestrated this, this program for drunks and all and everyone that are found to be chemically dependent. And the reason being is because God brought him from out of such a lifestyle. My question that I proposed to this individual was this, because Mike Hyde backslid. He drifted, and he was drifting about aimlessly in life upon the shores or upon the seas, amen, of life that would toss him and toss him about in a haphazard manner. Here was a man that was exposed to Pentecostalism. He was a man who knew what it was like to be brought up within an apostolic home. He was a man who knew what it was like to hear the testimonial of his own father having, having brought from out of those wretched ruins of despair. And yet, when he became a grown man himself, he drifted from it all. His life came nigh unto being lost. But God... The explanation that was offered to me in regard to that matter was that some are brought up within the comfortable pews of an apostolic church and they just want to test the waters and see what it's like outside. Wow. 
If you were to address my kite today, he'll tell you what it's like out there. He will let you to know that things are no different in comparison to what they were like concerning his own father when God brought him out. God did not have to salvage Mike Hyde's life. But God saved the hide of Mike Hyde. Hallelujah. But God saved the hide of Mike Hyde. I'm going to tell you kids something, you young people something. Just because you're brought up in an apostolic church, don't you develop this sense of false security and, make, and feel as if the enemy, the assailant of your soul, is not out to get you. He's going to do all that he can possibly do of and within himself uh, to drown you within the sorrowful despair of this world. Hallelujah. I want to preach to our young people here tonight. I want for you young children and young people to realize, amen, just because you're here doesn't mean you're safe. There have been a many a times and more times than not to where Satan has occupied, amen, church house pews. And he's doing all that he could possibly do to tantalize your mind and cause for your mind to drift uh, over into the far off yonder somewhere. The only yonder place you need to find yourself in, amen, is the yonder place that Abraham took Isaac to. I and the lad go yonder. And that place was called a place of worship. That place was called a place of sacrifice. My God of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the yonder place you need to go to. Because in that yonder place, you will find yourself both strapped uh, momentarily, resurrected into newness of life, realizing, amen, that the lamb that was slain from the foundation of this world took your place. Just as the song said here tonight. He took your place. And the reason why he took your place is to prevent or to keep you from going there. He can keep you from there as well as deliver you from there. I'm a testimonial to that. I was deterred long ago as a young man. He used to show real-to-real movies in elementary school of these crackheads and, and these pill poppers and the effects that it would have upon humanity and what it would cause for them to do and what alcohol would cause for humanity to do. And when I saw the after effects of what took place within these people's lives, oh, that deterred me enough. That discouraged me to keep me from wanting to go that route. But I could have gone that route very easily. Especially when the enemy, the adversary, made an attempt to interfere with my parents' relationship. When there was division in the home and, and he was trying to cause separation and I being the elder of the siblings, which at the time we didn't have the three younger ones. But God blessed us. And every one of us are in church to this very day. Why? But God. But God. But God. Hallelujah. But I can remember, and I can remember praying by my bedside in numerous nights. God intervene, do a work. I was an old Baptist boy, didn't know any different other than to pray. And I and pray I did. And there were those moments to where I would feel goosebumps all over me. It was as though it were the brush of an angel's wing just passing by. Or the Spirit of the Lord administering that for which I've never felt before. Only to assure me that all things were well, Brother Brandon. God was taking care of it. But even then, when it began to erupt and 
things seem to not look so well and, and it could be easily dismissed as gloom and doom. I'd have to pray all over again to find for myself that reassurance that God was in control. I'm going to tell you right now, just as the song says, it's true tonight. Even when we don't see it, God's working. Even when we don't feel it, God's working. We don't have to see it all. We don't have to feel it all. Just trust God. Just believe God for it. And encounter a but God situation in your youthful life, in your childhood lives. I was but 11 and 12 years of age when all this was taking place. But God stepped into the scene. <laughs> And God changed our name. I know our last name is Hargrave, but at the end of that name, you find Jesus there. Woo, let's give to the Lord some praise. Harakasata yolo robo kata. Let me show you what Jabez proved. Jabez proved uh, that painful situations. He proved that family problems. He proved that labels and other negative experiences do not have to, to define you in your life nor define my life. There are more Jabez is in and throughout the pages of God's word that prove to you and I we don't have to be defined by the negative. God is still doing great things within our midst. Come on, children. Come on, young people. Hallelujah. God can reverse our situation just like he did that for Jabez. In addition to turning our mourning into dancing and our sorrow into praise, God can increase our blessing beyond anyone else's imagination. We must refuse to limit God. Riley, you and I only know what was discussed the other day, but I'm going to address you here now. I'm going to let you know one thing, okay? But God. Christian, you and I have had a discussion a while back. You remember our conversation, the complications that you've been having in and throughout your life? Let me say it again for you, but God. But God, but God, you don't have to be defined any other way other than to have yourself defined by God. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. God can increase you. So I'm nothing. Well, so was I. Let me take it a step further. I'm still nothing apart from Jesus without hope, without his hope. For it's Christ in me now, the hope of glory. But God, but God, we must refuse to limit God. We must refuse to limit God. <laughs> I don't know who you are, young man, but you've got to refuse to limit God. Don't put limitations on God. Amen. You can't afford to put limitations on God. God is great. He's greater than great. He's greatly to be praised. He's eternal. If anyone confines God or limits God, it's we ourselves. More importantly, we must refuse to let others limit our vision of what God can accomplish within our own lives. He can. I've watched you, Riley. I've watched you, Addison. I've watched you all up here with this Sunday School Evangelistical team. And my, what a marvelous job y'all do. I've watched you, Bella, I'm starting to call you Olivia. 
Believe me, they're, just, they're complete opposites. <laughs> Bella says, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Your sister's back there doing the same thing. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I've listened to you sing. You've got a gift. You have a talent. Don't waste it. Don't allow for yourself to be robbed. Just humble yourself. And in a state of humility, when God's ready, he'll exalt you in due time. But God, it's all about him anyways. It's not about us. You put God in his proper, respectful place of worship and praise. Honey, God will see to it that you're elevated when the time occurs. It's just knowing the time. Well, I could preach a whole, whole entire message on that alone. Knowing the time. David's mighty men, 37 in number. These were men that would be willing to leap over a wall for him. They would fight an entire army on their own just for David. They were outcasts. In fact, when we read from out of the writings of Samuel, 1 Samuel 22 and 2, we read it this way. It says, all those who were in distress or in debt or discontented. Distress, in debt, and discontented. That sounds like where some of us were. They gathered around David, and he became their leader. Became their leader. David's brigade was a brigade of fugitives, mercenaries. They were renegades, Brother David Little. I've been labeled a renegade before. Not by anyone else other than my wife. You're a renegade. <laughs> what makes you say such hateful things? That's just, that's just us. We must have enjoyed a fearsome reputation during Saul's reign. For the king could not capture them, and neighboring Philistine rulers tolerated them. They are all usually described as intensely loyal to David. Actually, like most people, their loyalty depended, in some instances, upon David's success, just as it were found in Ziklag. When all was confiscated from them, they began to turn on David. But David then found himself in a place of distress. But his confidence was not within them men, but within God. But God. Hallelujah. And we find where with time David's leadership prevailed. And then afterward, and witnessing the blessings of God upon David's life repeatedly poured out over and over again, these men had absolutely no difficulty in remaining consistently faithful in following. I made reference to one individual, a man by, a man by the name of Uriah the Hittite. So faithful was he. To where that he would not be with his wife when called upon to do so, but would utterly sleep at the doorstep of David. Because his own comrades were out engaged in battle when David should have been there right along with them. But he was loyal. So loyal was he to the point of death. Little did he know that he would be carrying his own death sentence via letter form to Joab. So here it is, a man, and a man that would be willing to die for what was right. That's the way it ought to be with each and every one of you. And it needs to begin at a young age. At an extremely young age. 
We need to be precisely the character of which the proverb would want for us to be. And remembering now our creator in the days of our youth. Now while we are yet young. Now while we are yet vibrant. Now while we are yet filled with physical strength and stamina. Hallelujah. While you have the strength, you need to worship God like you've never had before. Some may laugh me and laugh me to scorn because of the way I dance and worship here up front. I care little as to what others think about me. I'm not under 60 years of age, but I'm not going to allow one young person, one child, one older person out serve the Lord, out worship the Lord for me or worship for me in my stead. Because he deserves my all. He deserves my everything. I know what God has done for me, with me, and through me in time past. Amen. And what he done for me, through me, amen, in time past, he could still use. And use them that are weak probably physically in stature. Amen. And strengthen them. And when no one else wants to, you dare refuse to do what you need to be doing. I can assure you God is going to strengthen a stone within the house somewhere. And that person is going to rise to the occasion and proof to you, amen, that God can restore to them the strength of their youthful days. How do you know, preacher? Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Everyone say renew their strength. Hallelujah. Oh, this is good stuff. Like most people, we all fall from time to time. But among the elite units that David had, known as the 30 and 7, were probably generals in charge of local militia. But there was one by the name of Dodo. Coming to a close. I don't know. If the young man was ever ridiculed, mimicked, made fun of for such a name. But I can assure you, when your dad looks to you and he doesn't like what you do sometimes, he probably calls you Dodo. Probably worse than that. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll pray for him. Okay. Dodo. Can you fathom having such a name? Can you make, come here, come here. Aren't you glad your mama named you Christian? Yeah. She could have named you Dodo. Has she ever called you Dodo before? She has? Did it feel good when she called you that? Not really. Not really. Not really. Not really. Have you ever proved to her that you're going to rise above that title? And let her to know, I'm not a dodo. Huh? Riley? Milton Riley. Dean Pitts. Stand up. Boy's almost as tall as I am now. But you hear me? When you get that tall, I'll cut your legs out from under you, okay? <laughs> Aren't you glad Mama didn't name you Dodo? Yes. yes. Has she ever called you Dodo before? Yes. yes. I figured as much. <laughs> you know why? Because she's a Hargrave, too. Can you move your mouth when I do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it feel good when she called you Dodo? No. What does it do? It seems to affect one's esteem. It demeans and disparages one. 
they feel almost as if they're an outcast. Now, some of you are thinking, shame on their mothers. I'm of the mind to believe that there are many more out there that are unwilling to testify to the fact that you have called your children dodo. My son-in-law said it well this morning. He understands why some wildlife eat their young. Yeah. It goes, the young are not as smart as they think themselves to be at times. But God. You know what you're going to do after tonight's message? The next time your mother calls you dodo Christian, you're going to say, but God, mama. <laughs> next time mama calls you dodo, just stay up. But God, mama. You know what? She's going to hate me for this. When your mama calls you dodo, you say, but God, mama. Can you say that tonight? When God gets a hold of us. One. Never mind. I can. Brandon picks on you enough without me having to do it. Do I look like a dodo to you? Don't you answer that. <laughs> you think you're bald now. Wait till I'll get through with you. <laughs> I'm doing what I can to be serious about this. But simultaneously be humorous. Humorous? Humorous? Yeah. And I want all of you children and you young people to realize how proud I am to see you sitting on the front row tonight. But God, but God, that's where they all need to be. You read about Dodo, if I remember correctly, if my mind serves me well, my memory serves me well. He was a mighty soldier, and he warred off a great number of enemy. And the scripture lets us to know that in his engagement of battle, that after having slayed, I, I, I mean, utterly numbers, I think it was maybe hundreds, that when they got to him, he was, he was so exhausted, so wore out, Brother, help me if my memory's not serving me well. They literally had to pry his hand loose from off his sword because the scripture said that his hand claved to the sword. He claved to the sword. Dodo's hand claved to the sword. Here's the sword. You want to war off the enemy? You get a grip on this. You want to fight the adversary? Get a grip on this. And dare not the enemy so much as try to pry your hand loose from that. And only when your comrades come to you, let them see that there's no separating you from the sword. The sword. Why? Because, but God... But God, but God, let's all stand. I made up my mind a long time ago. You young people think that we older ones don't ever, we're never tempted to do things. and We just... We, we, 
we got it easy, right? Huh? No. No way. No. You think Papa has it easy? No? Oh, good, good. Good. How many of you older ones have it easy? You have it easy? Well, I'm looking for hands. I don't see a hand one. Pops. Okay. <laughs> Gets easier all the time. Yeah. Now, he might have. <laughs> he may be truthful with us here tonight. <laughs> There's been many a times that <laughs> it hadn't been easy. But when I go over there to visit at times, it looks pretty easy to me. <laughs> he deserved it. At 80 years of age, Brother Ducere, you deserve those naps in the afternoons, right? <laughs> those evening hour rest, rest times, rest moments. Pops? Did you say that? When you trust God, it gets easier. You know, some older people, the older you get, the wiser you get. You eyes up to the fact and the reality that, hey, with God, it's just easier. It's just easier. It's harder the other way. It is. But God... This morning and tonight, I've preached, taught with our young people and our children in mind. I don't want to lose another one. Amen. So tell, I want to be able to stand in the gap. I want to stand in the gap. Have you given up on the others, Pastor? No, I'm not giving up. Neither do I expect for you to give up on them. Our youth that has drifted from this place need to know they've got a place of refuge to come back to. They need to know that there is a reliable church that they can come to. They need to know that there's a reliable group of people, amen, whose hearts and minds are set, that are made up. And Brother Brandon, that precious daughter needs to know that she's got a dad that's going to hang on to the sword, going to hang on to the promises. Oh, and you're going to cleave to it. Hallelujah. And when she comes back home, what a day that will be. We're going to rejoice right there with him. When our Tiffany's come back home, when our Jason Jordan's come back home, And they're coming back. They're coming back. <laughs> they're coming back. They're coming back. <laughs> I've asked myself the question. Was there more that I could possibly have done? Is there a different message I could have preached? Something that would literally set the pew on fire beneath them to the point where that they felt compelled. So when you ask why this preacher preaches the way he does, 
is because I think these girls are beautiful. And, and I don't want y'all to drift it out there.
working. Some of you were already dismissed and left this morning when I testified to the fact that in Madagascar, Brother Elder Clinty informed me that during this pandemic, COVID-19 ministry, <laughs> I'll tell you, things are happening. 
just because mankind would try to bring things to naught or halt. God's still working. Three Muslim business owners had dreams that said they needed to define for themselves an apostolic church. They went to an apostolic church, and from my understanding, they were baptized into the name of the Lord. Jesus, amen. amen. My son in law came to me afterwards. I think it was Brother DeMarch. It's plain they were bringing it back. After having heard the message himself, was baptized into the lovely name of Jesus Christ for the remission of his sins. The offering this church had raised to feed the hundreds in Africa and in Colombia. There are great things happening. Brother Long shared with me. Hundred people were baptized in Africa in the lovely name of Jesus Christ this past weekend. Hallelujah. He's not stopped working. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of it. I want to be in the midst of it. Hallelujah. I want to be in the midst of this great revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me, brother. What is your name again? Brother Combs, Sister Combs, what a pleasure it was to have the two of you here tonight. I'm going to ask a favor of you. I'm going to ask that you pray the Lord's blessings upon this church family and dismissal as we're dismissed from this place, but not from his presence. Amen. Brother, pray. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Okay, uh, Sister Tina needs to meet with the teachers. All right, afterwards. Also, Sister Shani is in need of meeting up with all of you ladies. Uh, as church is dismissed now. Amen. Hey, Jesus. Pastor. Yes, thank you. Uh, I want us all to be mindful. On, uh, put it on your schedules, on your calendar. October the 18th, that's on the Sunday afternoon, we're going to be hosting our Spanish outreach services in underneath the pavilion at the community, by the community center. So let's be mindful of this. Our Spanish outreach services on the 18th at 2.